Hey guys, so as you can see I put on my hipster glasses to look smarter because Christmas is here and with Christmas and the end of the year lists start arriving everywhere. No matter if you're a gaming magazine, channel, you do movies, whatever, you sure as hell are gonna be making lists at the end of the year. And I'm like, who am I to not get a piece of this list action? So in this video, which is kind of gonna be my Christmas special at the same time, I'm going to be giving you my top 5 games of 2018. The reason I'm only going top 5 and not top 10 and all that because I really wanted to narrow down the best experiences and honestly I did not buy too many games this year. However, all the ones that I bought, all the ones that appear on this list are quality and I'd recommend any of them. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoy. Let's get started with game number 5. Alright, without wasting any more time, let's get into these games. The number 5 slot is going to go to Dark Souls Remastered. I know, I know it's kind of cheating to put a game on the 2018 list that came out in 2011. However, this is the definitive version of Dark Souls, one of my favorite games of all time. So really, when you think about it, there's no way I could have excluded this game. Pretty much anyone who watches my channel knows what kind of history I have with this game and what kind of love I have for it. It is the first Souls game I've ever played and ever since it came out it had me hooked. As I said the remaster is the definitive version of this game even though it's not gonna offer too many surprises to people who are familiar with the game. Essentially Dark Souls goes untouched aside from a few quality of life changes, <clears throat> Lava and Lost Isolith, as well as the graphical overhaul. Now this fact alone had some people really mad, some people didn't mind it. Personally I did not mind it because I have such a strong fondness for the game. Even with the second half being much weaker than the first half of the game, I know uh, Bed of Chaos is a bullshit boss. However, uh, really any change they would have made would have been just as controversial as leaving the game untouched. It's not gonna diminish my fondness for the game. Especially since the DLC is of course included, which I think really, really saves the second half of the entire experience. If you're a Souls fan, if you have only played the later games, or if you want to re-experience this classic, this remaster is the way to go. Again, there's no way around it, this game is a classic. Plus the game is available on Nintendo Switch if you want to, you know, play Dark Souls on the shitter, now you have an opportunity to do so. Alright, the number 4 game on the list is going to be Fortnite Battle Royale. Now I know the very mention of this game is gonna cause some people's heads to pump, however there is no way I could have excluded this game from the list. Once again this game technically did not come out this year, however I think it qualifies because, well first of all, this game has seasons and all that, you know, it is kind of different than a normal game, plus I think Fortnite really hit peak popularity this year. As far as shooters go, again, this is my favorite game of 2018. I was hooked on this game. I'm still hooked on this game. I play a ton. And there is numerous reasons for that. First of all, the game is free and you do get quite a bit for paying nothing. The pricing model also is not overbearing or pushy, nor does it offer any competitive edge to people who do decide to spend money. This alone is a rarity in 2018 where games are pushing more and more scummy pricing models, more DLC, more scummy tactics to get you to pay, even in AAA full $60 price experiences. The fact that Fortnite is free and it doesn't have any of that is a huge positive. The second thing I have to mention is that the core gameplay loop is extremely fun. Whether you play alone or you've played with friends, even if you lose, even if you get the shot immediately after landing, you just want to keep playing over and over again. Whether you just do challenges, whether you mess around in creative mode or playgrounds, it doesn't matter, you're gonna have fun with this game. Third thing I have to mention is that I love this game's art style. So many shooters and so many games in general have that drab, colorless atmosphere. And when a game comes around that actually has some color, has a sense of fun, it is a welcome surprise. I would take this art style over another boring military shooter, <coughs> Black Ops 4, any day of the week. As far as shooters go, and as far as free games go, as far as addictive experiences go, you can do no better in 2018 than Fortnite. Alright, here we go, the number 3 slot has to go to Soul Calibur 6. Overall, fighting games had a strong year in 2018, 
Street Fighter V and Tekken 7 continued their strong streaks. Uh, there were some great anime games released this year. Dragon Ball Fighters was for sure the one game that took the cake in 2018. Gave a huge exposure to fighting games in general, I think. However, gameplay-wise, Soul Calibur VI takes the cake for me. Now, the reason I had to put this game on the list is because it offers something that I wanted for a long time. A more accessible 3D game. Now, I love Tekken. You know, you guys know that I love Tekken, it made it onto my list the previous year. However, one of my biggest issues with that game is the complexity. I kind of feel like that if I wanted to be even decent at Tekken 7, I would have to play just Tekken 7 for about a month and a half and nothing else. That's how complex the game is. Soul Calibur 6 restricts that complexity a little bit and actually manages to offer a more accessible 3D fighter. The game has plenty of single player and online content. I was actually surprised by how much fun the single player modes are. The character creator is absolutely ridiculous. I've actually been sucked into character creator several times and just spent, I don't know, like hours customizing characters. The game gets everything right pretty much. It is that sweet spot where it is easy to pick up and hard to master. If you just wanna pick up the game and mash out vertical and horizontal combos with your friends, you can do that, and the game is still gonna look flashy, it's still gonna look fun. If you wanna go in, learn the intricacies of the game, there's plenty of ways to do that. I mean, the characters are extremely complex, the movement options are fun, uh, there's like a really interesting combo mechanic, the just frame mechanic, so there's plenty here for pros to enjoy. Also, for any new players, the ranking system, while controversial sometimes, I think it does offer a uh, kind of chance for new players to keep feeling like they're ranking up and they're succeeding and not punish them overly for their losses. If you want an entry into the fighting game genre or if you want to make the switch from 2D games to 3D games, this is a great place to start. All right, we're getting close here, guys. Number two on the list is Into the Breach. Now, this is the only game on the list that I did not play on the channel. This was a game that I just picked up on Steam, I thought it looked cool, thought it would be fun, and I got absolutely immersed into it. I think no other game since The Binding of Isaac has immersed me this much into the kind of gameplay loop. If you don't know what this game is, Into the Breach is a turn-based strategy game from the makers of FTL, which is one of my favorite roguelikes, and it essentially offers up the Pacific Rim game we never got. I mean, I don't know if you've seen the Pacific Rim games, but they are absolute trash. But the core idea of Into the Breach is the same. You have giant mechs battling against giant monsters in a turn-based strategy game. As you see on your screen, the art style of this game is wonderful. I love this pixelated aesthetic, kind of similar to FTL, but I think this one is even more appealing to look at. Now, as you know, I am a fan of RTS and even turn-based strategy games, and Into the Breach manages to satisfy every itch in a year that honestly was kind of a dry spell for the strategy games, especially RTSs. The game is endlessly replayable. Uh, it is challenging and it is dirt cheap. I, th I think right now it's like 10 euros on Steam, so absolutely ridiculous for the amount of content you get. Again, it is a roguelike, so you will have to get used to trying over and over again. However, the game never gets boring. The strategy is always different. The scenarios are always different. And again, just the game is great to look at and you know as much as graphics don't matter art style does matter and this game this game gets it right just like FTL or the binding of Isaac once you get immersed into this game you will be hooked for a long time I was hooked and that alone makes it deserve the number two spot on the list and number one we're finally here some of you looking into the games that were on this list might have been able to figure out what my number one will be. However, without dragging this out any longer, I'm just gonna say it. The number one spot goes to Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. I've been looking forward to this game for ages, so technically it did have sort of an advantage over the other ones. It's pretty much the reason I got a Switch. Luckily, I'm happy to report that the game does not disappoint. I love the Smash series, however, I unfortunately missed out on Smash 4 since I did not own a Wii U. Smash Ultimate is exactly what I wanted from the new Smash game. The game, once again, 
kind of similar to Soul Calibur 6, is easy to pick up, hard to master. This game can be as complex as you want it to be. Whether you want serious competitive 1v1s versus people, or you want chaotic party style 4 player battle modes with crazy items, you can do anything in this game. Not to mention that Smash is genuinely one of the few fighting games that I enjoy playing single player on. The story mode with Kirby, you know, is fun, although not the most complex. However, I think as far as single player modes go, classic mode is where it's at, with each character getting a unique, challenging experience. Not to mention, the roster is absolutely insane. Literally insane, there's like 70 characters in the game. Each of them are unique, well, except for the Fire Emblem ones, but still, I'm just kidding. Uh, each character has their complexities, each character is fun to play, whether you want to play Ganondorf or Sonic. I mean, I've been picking up characters I never thought I would want to play with, such as Ganondorf or Bowser. Online, you can get the same game modes. You can be as chaotic and as controlled as you want. Again, you can go straight up sweat mode try hard and really compete 1v1 with people or just go absolutely crazy. Plus, again, if you want to take this game seriously, you will have plenty to learn from movement options to edge guarding to everything. Like if you want if you're a fighting game player, this game has plenty of complexity to offer. I've been playing non-stop since the game was released and it is the only game this year that I literally cannot put down. And I think just because of that, it for sure deserves the number one spot. I can see that this will be a game just like MKX that I will continue playing into 2019 and even beyond. And there's gonna be very few games coming out that are gonna top this experience. So yeah, that was the list. Let's get to IRL me with the outro. Yeah, that's it, we're done. Top five games of 2018. Hope you guys enjoyed. I am doing this at the same time as I did my intro. Obviously, I'm going to put in the actual games in between. So yeah, once again, hope you enjoyed. Uh, there's going to be more special videos coming uh, until the end of the year. And even beyond the new year, I'm planning some stuff. So yeah, I think I'm going to wrap it up here and not delay this any longer. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like, comment on what you thought were the best games of this year. Make sure to sub if you haven't yet. I am so close to 10k literally 85 subs away so i'd really appreciate any sub again i don't normally beg for shit like this but i feel like it's the holiday season i deserve some subs i'm only joking of course and not subway sandwiches by the way even though i do like those as well so yeah thanks for watching and peace out guys